General Quaxoby, how nice of you to join us. Okay, my good internet friend Attila Kovax from Hungary asks, what do you think, how believable, realistic could it be if those typical Lovecraftian space god type creatures like Azatot were products of classic Darwinian evolution? I mean, here on Earth we have creatures with somewhat godlike powers, he says, such as jellyfish that can revert to a polyp stage or animals that can survive in extreme environments, so on and so forth. Okay, a lot to unpack here. Okay, let's first introduce Lovecraftian creatures for our viewers who know less. Basically, H.P. Lovecraft, this 1930s author, developed this alternative genre of sci-fi slash horror in which strange cosmic gods and incomprehensible creatures assault people from all corners of life and space and he wrote a lot of short stories and one very good novel called the mountains of madness around this mythos which he nicknamed the cthulhu mythos if you're interested in finding out more about H.P. Lovecraft and the Cthulhu mythos, you can check uh, the links in the video description below. Now let's talk about the creatures in H.P. Lovecraft stories. They are godlike, incomprehensible things. In, in one of the stories called The Hounds of Tindalos, for example, there were these dog-like beings from other dimensions that would emerge from corners with right angles. So the protagonist of the story covered all of his house with plaster, rounding all and any corners in case these demons manifested themselves. And of course they did. And in another story, there are people who change into these fish-like creatures through some sort of mutation or dark magic. Mind you, these stories were written in the 1920s and the 30s, so people didn't know much about genetics or mutation or even evolution for that matter. So all of these scientific backgrounds are more arcane and actually more tasteful to read. I mean, they're inaccurate, but who cares? Most of the stories are really entertaining. Now, towards the end of his career, H.P. Lovecraft was evolving into a more solid science fiction author. His book, At the Mountains of Madness, is about a solid expedition to Antarctica, where they uncover a lost city of godlike beings from the past. And all of these details are given from a scientist's perspective and it's clear to see that if H.P. Lovecraft hadn't died he would have gone towards a more biologically oriented science fiction type of direction and less towards ghouls and ghosts basically but a central, a central theme in all of Lovecraft's story is the theme of unknown and the unknownability of these gods and he makes it clear that these beings are as superior to our knowledge with all our science and whatever they are as superior to us as a as einstein is to a cockroach so there's a lot of that incomprehensible magic thing about it too now attila asks basically what if these Lovecraftian gods were real and the result of some sort of evolutionary progress what would they look like and how would their lives be okay let's look at the science of Lovecraftian creatures then so to begin with there is as I explained 
two main grades of Lovecraftian creatures. Some of them are really godlike or basically dark gods. Things like Cthulhu, who sleeps in a city under the oceans, or Azotot, who is supposed to be the primordial chaos that existed before everything else. And one of my favorites is this lesser known deity called Ubbo Shtalha or Satla or something. And basically, he is this globe of jelly that sits in the Precambrian Ocean beach. So before there was any life on Earth. And he just kept producing these strange, weird creatures or disjointed forms from his body. He was like a chaotic engine of creature creation. And ultimately, in the story, it's hinted that Ubo Stalha or Satla gave rise to the first life forms on Earth. So this is how creative H.P. Lovecraft was. So if you look at these godlike creatures and try to envision a scientific biological background for them, I think to our frame of knowledge now, the best solution is that of a nanomachine or an extremely advanced technical entity that could manipulate life forms or manipulate matter at an atomic level. So imagine there this in case of things like azotot, maybe azotot could be made out of sand like particles drifting in space, communicating with each other with microscopic modem or whatever. And they have this disjointed consciousness. And if they need to become tangible, they pack closer together, develop limb like things. And otherwise they could disperse like some sort of dark smoke and things like Ubbo Shatla or Stalha, what the fuck ever that creature is called. So he would be more of a kind of engine of creation, like this random genetic assembly machine sitting in the Precambrian mud and things like Cthulhu, the very famous ancient god he is always pictured as having this squid like head they are i think more biological entities so not as much nanotech for them but they have somehow been made immortal and invincible through this nanotechnological augmentation so imagine there's this alien creature but it has this sort of thing for blood this nanotechnological liquid that can keep him alive forever and maybe is responsible for preserving him when he's sleeping or when he wakes it gives him godlike powers maybe storing energy or whatever it's all very hand wavy but at this point we have at least the theoretical vocabulary to ascribe some sort of reality to all of these fictional demons. And as for the second type of Lovecraftian creature, the more biologically grounded, realistic looking aliens that H.P. Lovecraft dreamt up towards the end of his career, the explanation is far easier. For example, in this book, The Mountains of Madness, Lovecraft designs this race of old ones who created all life on Earth and built these cities. And in the book, actually, the scientists try to classify them as derived echinoderms, relatives of starfish or some sort of fungus or whatever. So the science there is pretty open to see. They are biological entities. Older, more advanced, but still things we could understand with our knowledge of science. Well, guys, hope this answers this question. The science of Lovecraftian creatures. 
about HP Lovecraft. So it emerged in the last five years. Of course, it was always known, but it became a thing in the last five years that Lovecraft was a pretty awful racist or had extremely racist views for his time. And because of this, there were things like an award in his name being revoked and stuff like this and in certain sci-fi circles he's even becoming anathema now okay his views are crap you know what can you say it's very funny so where i live okay kurdish separatism is an issue a very thorny issue very bloody one too and in one of his stories the horror at red hook hp lovecraft speaks about these vile demonic kurdish immigrants with their dark chants and evil magic or something and at the end of the story it emerges that yeah these kurdish or yezidi immigrants in new york were summoning some sort of demonic presence and they were up to some demonic hijinks so even in places like turkey because of this uh, mesopotamian connection there were controversies now my point of view on this and any other cases of political incorrectness is clear and simple the guy sucks but his work stands on his own and yeah it's a surprise but you know assholes can produce great work too so i still wouldn't disown or look down upon hp lovecraft's works because he was a racist back in those days i guess racism was a majority thing i don't know so i don't want to get too deep into that but there's a funny website called Hitler or Lovecraft and it gives you quotes and you get to guess if it's Adolf Hitler or H.P. Lovecraft who said these really awful things. Also, before finishing, I'll give you a final trick question and if you can guess the answer right, the first person, I don't know, gets a free Lovecraftian drawing from me. Okay, are you ready? What is the common thing between dinosaurs and the works of H.P. Lovecraft. Ponder upon this, you mighty, and farewell. <laughs>